Welcome to Too Fond of Books. I'm Janelle, and today we are going to talk tropes. But first, I need to give you the answer to yesterday's My March Mystery Madness Mindbender. The clue was, this Matthew Shardlake novel by C.J. Sansom includes descriptions of Bethlehem Hospital. And the answer is Revelation. In this book, he visits Bethlehem Hospital, which is also known as Bedlam. This book takes place in 19, 19, in 1543, and uh, he visits Bedlam. Bedlam was um, is the common name for this asylum that uh, was a hospital for hundreds of years, that I think. So stay tuned to the end of the video for the next mind bender. But now. Let's get uh, into the tropes. A trope is a plot device that writers use. A very famous and popular mystery trope is the red herring, for example. But today I want to talk about the locked room trope. The locked room is a form of the impossible crime. Sometimes people will say that they're the same thing, but they're actually a bit different. So the locked room is a form of an impossible crime. It is murder, usually, committed in a location locked with no way in and no way out. We can't figure out how the killer got in and how the killer got out. Sometimes the weapon, even, is missing. While definitely still a whodunit, locked room mysteries are also howdunits. They're puzzle mysteries and they reached their peak in the golden age when um, ingenuity of plot was highly praised. This is what people wanted in their stories was a really good plot, um, a really ingenious plot and that was why locked rooms were so very common. Many writers attempted locked room stories, but the master was John Dixon Carr, otherwise known as Carter Dixon. He wrote just a lot of locked room mysteries, and the majority of them are very good. So, um, even though they declined in... Um, in the years following the Second World War, there were still locked room mysteries coming out. And there are still actually very popular locked room television shows. Some good examples are Jonathan Creek, which is a British television sh show um, about a magician's assistant. Uh, Monk is a, an American detective show or Death in Paradise, which is another British uh, detective show. All of these uh, rely on the locked room trope for most of their stories. And I love all three of their shows. And that's because I really enjoy a good locked room mystery. In 1981, an informal poll of 17 mystery writers and reviewers uh, came up with the 10 best locked room mysteries of all time. And number one on their list was The Hollow Man by John Dixon Carr. This was published in 1935. I don't have a copy of this book. I'll try and put a picture on the screen. Um, I'm looking for a copy of this book because I'm very interested. It's a Dr. Gideon Fell story. Famously, he gives a lecture right in the middle of the story on locked room mysteries. He breaks the fourth wall and speaks directly to the reader. In this uh, story, there are two locked room or impossible crimes. The second one happens outside in the middle of an empty street and there are no footprints in the snow. But let's back up to the beginning. Most people would agree that Edgar Allan Poe's The Murders in the Rue Morgue are the very first locked room story. This is a compilation I have called The Dead Witness and The Murders in the Rue Morgue are in here. That's the best I can do to show you a picture. <laughs> um, it's a short story. The detective is C. Auguste Dupin and it is set in Paris. A woman and her daughter are found murdered in a locked room. How did the murderer get in or out? 
50 years later, in 1892, 50-odd years later, Arthur Conan Doyle wrote The Adventure of the Speckled Band in his book The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The story was originally published in the Strand magazine like most of his were. It is another short story um, and a locked room mystery. Helen, Sto Helen Stoner, a soon-to-be-married woman, comes to Sherlock Holmes because she believes that her stepfather is trying to kill her in order to retain her inheritance. She wants Sherlock Holmes to protect her. She also wants Sherlock Holmes to figure out what happened to her sister who died in a locked room two years earlier. Then, um, in that same year, 1892, we have what most people would agree is the first full-length locked room mystery and that is the big bow mystery by Israel Zangwill. Now this cover that I have, I hope you can see that, this is a crazy crazy cover. Now Die over at Dice's 19 Hearts has created a cover scavenger hunt for March Mystery Madness and I am totally counting this cover for the word creepy in that scavenger hunt. This, um, in this story, it, it is, takes place in London, in the Bow District of London. The detective is a retired police inspector, George Grod, Grodman, and the victim is Arthur Constant, who is found dead in his locked and bolted bedroom. I have to mention his landlady because her name is Mrs. Drab Dump. I don't know how he came up with that. Anyways, um, Israel Zangwill was a contemporary of Charles Dickens, which I find so interesting because in my mind they seem to be from completely different worlds, but they're contemporaries. And he has a hilarious introduction at the front. This um, is an introduction that he wrote for a, a reprint four years later, and I won't read the whole thing, but I will read a little bit because it is, it is very funny. As this little book was written some four years ago, I feel able to review it without prejudice. A new book, just hot from the brain, is naturally apt to appear faulty to its begetter. But an old book has got into the proper perspective and may be praised by him without fear or, fail or favor. The Big Bow Mystery seems to me an excellent murder story, as murder stories go, for while it, as sensational as the most of them, it contains more humor and character creation than the best. Indeed, the humor is too abundant. Mysteries should be sedate and sober. There should be a pervasive atmosphere of horror and awe such as Poe manages to create. Humor is out of tone. It would be more artistic to preserve a somber note throughout. But I was a realist in those days, and in real life, mysteries occur to real persons with their individual humors, and mysterious circumstances are apt to be complicated by comic. I read this years ago, I think I'm due for a reread, The Big Bow Mystery by Israel Zangwill. Then we move into the next century and the time period where locked room mysteries started to explode onto the market. And in 1922, A.A. A. Milne wrote The Red House Mystery. A.A. A. Milne is, of course, a, a beloved children's author that we know well for his Winnie the Pooh stories. But he wrote one detective story. The Red House is the home of wealthy Mark Ablett. His brother, Robert, is found shot in a locked room and Mark has vanished. This one has amateur detectives and kind of surprisingly, Christopher Robin shows up in this story. Just kidding. <laughs> in a reprint, Milne discusses the rules that he considers important to a, a good detective story, a good mystery. Um, and I don't have that edition, but his six rules are story should be written in good English, love interest is undesirable, both detective and villain should be amateurs, scientific detec detection is too easy, the reader should know as much as the detective, 
and there should be a Watson. It is better for the detective to Watsonize than soliloquize. And I agree. In 1931, Anthony Wynne wrote Murder of a Lady. This is a British Library Crime Classics edition with a gorgeous cover. It's set in a castle in the Scottish Highlands and the victim has been stabbed to death in her bedroom. The door is bolted, the windows are barred. The only clue is a silver fish scale on the floor next to the body. In 1934, Ellery Queen published The Chinese Orange Mystery. Now, I mentioned earlier about um, the 1981 poll that came up with the 10 best um, locked room mysteries and this one was voted eighth best. I love this edition. Look at this skeleton reading a book on here. Isn't that awesome? This also includes a challenge to the reader. In this story, the victim is found in a locked room. His skull is crushed. His clothing is reversed and all the furnishings have been turned backwards. Intriguing. Then a year later in 1935, Carter Dixon published two locked room mysteries that I'm gonna talk about. This is the Red Widow Murders from 1935. An oddly assorted group of people draw cards to see who will spend the night locked into a room said to be haunted by the Red Widow, a legendary figure who was married to an executioner who guillotined French aristocrats. In the morning, the victim is found dead, locked inside a room whose door was continually under observation. He has been poisoned by curare, which must be absorbed into the body through a break in the skin, but no wounds of any kind are found on the body. And this is a Sir Henry Maryville story. A lot of the ones that include uh, Sir Henry Maryville are locked rooms. And can I just say how much I love this edition of this book? I think it is fantastic. It is a pocketbook edition, um, and it has these red pages, which are awesome. Uh, I just love this so much, and I'm so excited that I found it. In the same year, he also published The Unicorn Murders, um, and this edition is from 1935. I, I don't think it's a first edition or anything like that, but. Um, it is, uh, again, a super fantastic edition. This is, as it is an impossible crime with Henry Merrillville. A man is found murdered in plain sight. Nobody and nothing was near him, but he has been speared through the forehead by an invisible weapon, a weapon that by its shape resembles a unicorn horn. This, again, is a great edition with green pages and a cool map on the back. I am so excited that I found I found both of these editions in our used bookstore and I did not pay very much for them, probably two or three dollars each. In 1936, Miles Burton published Death in the Tunnel. This is another British Library Crimes cl Crime Classics edition. On a dark November evening, Sir Wilfred Saxonby is traveling alone in the five o'clock train from Cannon Street in a locked compartment. The train slows and stops inside a tunnel, and by the time it emerges again minutes later, Sir Wilfred has been shot dead. And what kind of March Mystery Madness video would it be if I didn't include, include Agatha Christie? A Holiday for Murder is from 1938. It is also known as Murder for Christmas or Hercule Poirot's Christmas. So it's a Hercule Poirot. And he is at this house there having dinner. And after hearing screams and crashing furniture, they rush to the door, which has to be broken down because it is uh, locked. And they find the furniture overturned and crockery smashed and Simeon dead with his throat cut. The case of the constant suicides. This is a John Dixon car from 1941 with Dr. Gideon Fell. It is set in a castle in the Highlands of Scotland. 
Three men are indirectly murdered while they are inside locked, sealed, and inaccessible rooms. And then in 1945, Mary Roberts Reinhardt published The Yellow Room. Um, I don't know if you can see that. That's the best I've got. This edition that I have is from 1945, so that's kind of cool. Oh, here we go. There you can see the title. There we go. In this one, the, the main characters arrive in Maine to open up a house. It's locked up and there is a charred corpse in the linen closet. In 1950, John Rowland uh, published Calamity in Kent. This is another British library crime classic with another great cover. This one has the setting of a seaside town of Broadgate. The operator of the cliff railway locks the empty carriage one evening. When he returns to work the next morning, a dead body is locked inside, a man who has been stabbed in the back. This one has Inspector Shelley of Scotland Yard and Jimmy London, a newspaper reporter. And then in the 60s, we have one more John Dixon card to, to talk about. This is from 1965. The House at Satan's Elbow. It's another Dr. Gideon Fell, and Pennington Barclay seems to have seen a ghost and then been shot in a locked room. Let's jump ahead to the 70s and this uh, Swedish writing team, and I tried to figure out how to say their names, but I'm still going to butcher them. Ma Svajval and Per Val. Valu? I'm really sorry, I completely butchered that. Anyway, this is The Locked Room. It's been translated from the Swedish and it's one of the Martin Beck um, books. It was not a pretty sight. The corpse had been lying there for weeks. The door was bolted from the inside, all the windows locked. Cause of death, gunshot wound in the chest. Official verdict, suicide. Martin Beck doubted it. If the man had killed himself, where was the gun? Good question, Martin Beck. You better investigate. And then in 1981, in Japan, Soji Shimada published the Tokyo Zodiac Murders. Now this one is very intriguing to me. Uh, it was not translated into English until more than 20 years after it was originally published. It is a locked room mystery that also includes a challenge to the reader. Now, so there is a lot of elements of that traditional puzzle mystery, but apparently it also has really violent descriptions in here. Um, and so the challenge to the reader which is so interesting, gentle reader. Unusual as it may be for the author to intrude into the proceedings like this, there is something I should like to say at this point. All of the information required to solve the mystery is now in your hands. Let me throw down the gauntlet, he ends. I challenge you to solve the mystery before the final chapters. Challenge to the reader were pretty popular in the golden age and then it quickly fell out of um, out of use and so I find it so interesting that that's included in this book. In Japan, 1936, an old eccentric artist living surrounded by seven women has been found dead in a room locked from the inside. In his testament, alchemy, astrology and a complicated plan to kill these women. Soon after the plan is carried out, the seven women are found dismembered and buried across rural Japan. In 1979, these Tokyo Zodiac murders have been obsessing a nation for decades, but none of them has been solved. A mystery-obsessed illustrator and a talented astrologer set off around the country, and you follow, pursuing the enigma of the Zodiac murderer through madness, misleads, and magic tricks. You have all the clues, but can you solve the mystery before they do? Now, I don't read a ton of violent mysteries, but this one has me intrigued and I will definitely be reading it and I will let you know what I think of this locked room mystery. And then our most 
recent locked room mystery, possibly, is The Escape Room by Megan Golden. And this came out in 2018. I think this is a modern take on a locked room mystery, but I'm gonna have to read it to find out for sure, and I will let you know. In this, four men who are heading to a team building exercise are locked in an elevator in a building that is um, unfinished and currently not used. Welcome to the escape room. Your goal is simple, get out alive. And then finally, I've got a couple, a couple of compilations here for you that include um, uh, short stories, possibly short novellas. This is Miraculous Mysteries, edited by Martin Edwards, and this is from the um, British Library Crime Classics uh, series, Locked Room Murders and Impossible Crimes. And... This one is so big, it's a chunker. I don't know if you can tell how big this is. The Black Lizard Big Book of Locked Room Mysteries, edited by Otto Penzler. The most complete collection of impossible crime stories ever assembled. And I like how he has the, um, uh, the chapters laid out. Familiar as the Rose in Spring, the most popular and frequently reprinted impossible crime stories of all time. This was the unkindest cut of all. Stabbing in a completely sealed environment appears to be the most common murder method. Footprints in the Sands of Time. Is there a more baffling scenario than to find a body in smooth sand or snow with no footprints leading to or from the victim? Those are just some examples. So if you like uh, a good compilation, you might want to check out the Big Lizard, the Black Lizard Big Book of Locked Room Mysteries. Okay, that was a lot. Uh, do you like locked room mysteries? Is that a trope that you enjoy in your mystery stories? Let me know down in the comments down below. I love to chat about this stuff. Do any of these books sound interesting to you? Again, let me know in the comments. Do you, have you read any of these? What are your thoughts of them as locked room mysteries? And before I say goodbye, I'm going to give you your next My March Mystery Madness Mind Bender. Ellis Peters wrote 20 Brother Cadfell mysteries set in a 12th century Benedictine monastery. What was Cadfell's occupation before he became a monk? Okay. Put your answers in the comment section down below and I will see you for another video tomorrow. Bye!